have your Bibles this morning, I would like to ask you to please turn to the book of Luke. I'd like to read from Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. I encourage you to go home and read the entire chapter, but the one verse of scripture that's here that you're very familiar with, Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. Uh, this has been on my heart several times during this week. Uh, in fact, there have been several different occasions that I have uh, encouraged some of God's children to remember what Jesus says in this verse of Scripture. Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. The Word of God says, In your patience possess ye your souls. In your patience possess ye your souls. The word patience there means cheerful confidence while waiting on the Lord. Remember that. The definition of patience there is cheerful confidence while you are waiting on the Lord. Uh, it also means to endure trials of your faith. And this verse says that it's in your patience, in your cheerful waiting on the Lord, that you possess your soul. Now, your soul can be cast down. Same thing as being depressed or discouraged or despondent. And you can keep your soul from being cast down if you have patience, if you are cheerfully confident while you're waiting on the Lord, your soul will not be cast down. So it's in your patience, it's in cheerfully being confident while you're waiting on the Lord that your soul will not be cast down. In fact, the scripture says that your soul can perish, your soul can die, your soul can go so far away that, uh, that you just don't feel anything anymore, no joy at all in your life. And so it's extremely important that all of us have patience, the kind of patience that the Word of God is talking about here, cheerful confidence while we are waiting on the Lord. We ought to be happy every day of our lives. Even in the midst of trials and afflictions and tribulations, we can be full of joy in the midst of troubles in life. But it all depends on whether or not we're going to exercise the patience that God has given us. Patience and faith uh, are almost inseparable. Uh, sometimes we sing the song, Have faith in God. Uh, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. There are just a multitude of scriptures that teach us as children of God that we need patience and it's in our patience, cheerful confidence while waiting on the Lord that we possess our souls. There are a lot of blessings to the people of God that do exercise patience, that are cheerfully confident while they're waiting on the Lord. Uh, go with me. Let's begin by looking in the book of James. There are several times in the book of Hebrews and James where the Word of God talks about patience, and I want us to look at some of those expressions that the Word of God helps us to understand what it means to be patient, to be happy while we're going through difficult times. We can be rejoicing in the Lord and have confidence in God even when we know that we're unable to face the problems of life. We know that with God's help, as we all know, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things, how? Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, it's that confidence that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. That's the patience or cheerful confidence that we all ought to have because of our confidence in God. James chapter 1, beginning with verse 2. James Chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. The Word of God says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Now, brethren, I don't like temptations. This tells you what you have to go through to get patience. Scripture says here, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into 
divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. When your faith is being tried, when you're going through difficult times, that's how you learn patience. That's how you get patience. It's to, through trials of your faith, through the trial of your faith, that works patience. Then verse 4 says, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. To be totally confident in God, to know that God is in control, to know that God has all power, to know that God loves you with an everlasting love, and that God has promised I will never leave you nor forsake you, that and many other promises in the word of God, that ought to give you great peace in your soul. And your soul cannot be cast down if you have patience and you're waiting on the Lord and trusting in the Lord while you're waiting on the Lord. I don't know of anything harder to do than to wait on the Lord. Uh, because I want things done sometimes a lot quicker than what God's going to do them. And I have to learn patience. I have to learn to wait on the Lord. I have to pray that God will help me to exercise my faith in God so that I can have patience, that I will have cheerful confidence while I'm in the process of waiting on the Lord to help me with my troubles and trials and tribulations. Come down to verse 12. Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Now, what, what's this verse got to do with verses 2, 3, and 4? Verse 2 says, Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience. So, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. One of the ways that you manifest your love for God is by having confidence in God. Children that have confidence in their parents and trust in their parents, they're manifesting faith in, the, in what their parents can do, and they're manis, manifesting faith in the love that the parents have for them. Well, I'll tell you, brethren, the children of God have much more confidence, we ought to have, much more confidence in God and much more assurance of the love of God and the power of God and the grace of God that will help us in all of our troubles. And that ought to give us patience as we're waiting on the Lord. Cheerful confidence while we're waiting on the Lord. <clears throat> Come down to verse 19. James chapter 1 and verse 19. By the way, what does verse 12 tell us about the man that endures temptation? When he is tried, when he's gone through that trial, and he has exercised patience, he shall receive the crown of life. Let me just pause there and tell you, brethren, that's not talking about getting some kind of an ornament on your head when you get to heaven one day. Rather, it's talking about the crown, the crown of the hill. What is the crown of the hill? It's the highest point on the hill. And the crown of life is the greatest part of life you can ever experience. You'll receive the crown of life. You'll receive great joy in this life when you endure temptation. And you cannot endure temptation unless you have that cheerful confidence, that patience and faith in God. If you have that, then you can endure temptation and you will receive the crown of life if you have the kind of patience that you need every day of your life. Children need patience. Adults need patience. You never reach an age in your life that you don't need patience. You need that cheerful confidence because it's in your patience that you possess your what? You possess your soul. Has your soul ever been cast down? Have you ever been discouraged and despondent and your soul was cast down? David in Psalm 42 and 43, he keeps saying, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? He's talking to himself. He's asking himself, Why are you cast down three times? He says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? 
Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Have faith in God. Trust in God. Have patience as you wait on the Lord. Have cheerful confidence while you're waiting on the Lord. We have to talk to ourselves sometimes to get out of the rut that we're in. We have to exercise our faith. We have to say out loud sometimes things that we don't necessarily feel as strongly as we ought to feel. I was talking to someone this week and they said, you know, that song, Jesus Loves Me, means so much. Does it? It ought to. It ought to. Jesus loves me. Whenever your soul is cast down, you ought to start singing, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And brethren, the people of God ought to rejoice in the amazing grace of God and the love of God and the mercy of God. And it's because of the love and the mercy and the grace of God that I can have cheerful confidence that no matter what I'm facing in my life, that God is going to help me and I will be able to overcome and endure that temptation. And then if I do endure the temptation, I will receive the crown of life. But I have to have patience. I have to have cheerful confidence while I wait on the Lord. Look in your Bible at verse 19, James 1, verse 19. The Word of God says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be three things. Swift to hear. Always be swift to hear. Slow to speak. And slow to wrath. You know what it takes to be slow to speak? Patience. Patience. It takes patience to be slow to speak and to be slow to wrath. And the people of God need to pray every day, God, help me that I can have patience as I go through my day. Help me not to, help me not to speak before I think about what I'm going to say. Help me not to condemn people. Help me to be more loving and kind and compassionate with people that are going through difficult times in their lives. Sometimes we say things that are much too harsh to people that are struggling in the troubles of life. And instead of encouraging them, instead of helping them, instead of strengthening their faith in God, sometimes we shatter them by saying things that we ought not to be saying. So we need to be slow to what? Slow to speak and slow to wrath. What does that take in order to be slow to speak and slow to wrath? It takes patience. Now go to James chapter 5. Look at James chapter 5. He continues to talk about patience in James chapter 5 beginning in verse 7. James chapter 5 beginning in verse 7. Do all of you parents need patience while you're working with your children? Yes, you do. You need, you need to pray every day. God, give me patience. Do all of you wives need patience with your husbands? Yes, you do. Do all of you husbands need patience with your wives? Yes, you do. Listen, brethren, we need to exercise more patience than what we're doing in our lives. And if you don't exercise patience... You're going to lose your soul. The brethren, the Word of God repeatedly talks about how the children of God can lose their soul. I'm not talking about dying and going to hell, but I'm talking about, brethren, that children of God can experience a hell here on this earth. They can lose their soul, and their soul can be down in the pit. Their soul can be in a grave. We need to pray that God will help us, that we would be happy and rejoice and have patience and have Cheerful confidence every day, no matter what's going on around us. A lot of times we don't have patience, we don't have confidence, we're not happy because we're looking at the wrong things in life. And I would encourage all of you to begin to look at the right things instead of the wrong things. James chapter 5, beginning in verse 7. James chapter 5, verse 7. The Word of God says, Be Patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. And brethren, he's not talking about the final coming here. But the Lord comes many times in our lives to take account of our stewardship. 
And we need to be patient. We need to have cheerful confidence that God is going to come and help us in our troubles and problems. So be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. What kind of uh, occupation is he talking about in verse 7? What kind of analogy is he giving in verse 7? A particular kind of worker needs patience as he waits for the fruit. What kind of worker is that? Okay, a farmer. He has to have patience. He has to wait for the fruit of his labor. Every time I plant a garden, I go out the next day looking for fruit. And I go out there every day, every day, looking and looking. And finally when I see that plant beginning to burst forth from the ground, I get so happy and, and I rejoice. And I keep waiting for the fruit. Well, it takes patience to wait for fruit. And, and James, by inspiration of God, is telling us, look at how a husbandman has to wait for the fruit to come up out of the ground. And we have need of patience that we also might wait for the fruit that God has promised in our lives. So he says in verse 8, after he's told, told us about the farmer that has to be patient, waiting for the early and the latter rain, waiting for the fruit. Verse 8 says, Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Brethren, he's not, James is not telling the people here that he's writing to, Jesus is about to come back and take us to heaven. He's telling them that Jesus is going to come and help you with your troubles and with your problems. And you need to have confidence. You need to have patience while you wait on the Lord. Let me just stop right here and say, all of you young people, you need to wait on the Lord in many, many different ways in your lives. And if you wait on the Lord... If you really wait on the Lord, God will guide you in your life. But it takes patience to wait on the Lord. Come down to verse 10. Verse 10 says, Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of what? Patience. You go back and read about the prophets. You read about Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. Read about all those prophets and you read about how they suffered, but they had patience as they had cheerful confidence while they were waiting on the Lord. We need, have, we need to look at those examples of patience, those prophets that were patient as they waited on the Lord. Verse 11 says, Behold, we count them happy which endure, Ye have heard of the patience of Job. Did Job wait on the Lord? For, for a season, did he have cheerful confidence while he was waiting on the Lord? And then when he lost his patience, then God had to rebuke him sharply. But then Job's understanding returned to him, and he began to be patient again, and he waited on the Lord and did God grant him more than he had ever had before? He did. God did that, but Job had to be patient and wait on the Lord. Verse 11, Behold, we count them happy, which endure ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. God, God will provide. God will come. God is going to take care of you. God is going to help you. God's going to provide what you need in your life, but you need patience to wait on the Lord. It's in your patience that you possess your what? That you possess your soul. Now turn back to the book of Hebrews very quickly. There's, there's three statements in Hebrews that I want you to look at very quickly. In Hebrews, first of all, Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to back up about ten pages from where we're reading in the book of James. Look at Hebrews chapter 6. Do you know anybody that you feel like they have patience? Do you know anybody that doesn't have patience? Do you know anybody that needs more patience? I think all of us need more patience than what we have. And we need to ask God for it. James also says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally. The same thing's true of patience. If you lack patience, 
you need to ask God to help you to be more patient. Look now at Hebrews chapter 6. Listen please to verses 11 and 12. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 11 and 12. The word of God says, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now, I read from James chapter 1 and verse 12. I read to you in that verse of scripture a promise that was going to be given if you endure temptation in James 1.12. What was the promise that was given there that if you endure temptation, what was the promise God said you would get? The crown of life. Uh, the scripture uh, gives many promises to the people of God that endure temptation and have patience as they're cheerfully, confidently waiting on the Lord. Verse 12 says, We don't need to be slothful, but we need to be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. There are, he doesn't say promise singular. He says promises plural because there are numerous promises in the word of God to the people of God who have patience and are waiting on the Lord. Now look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Do we sometimes have patience for a while and then lose that patience? Do we sometimes have con cheerful confidence for a while and then poof, it goes right out the window? That does happen. And we need to fall on our knees and ask the Lord to help us to get back into that condition of having patience in our heart, mind, and soul. Hebrews chapter 10, starting with verse 35. The Lord of God says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Does the word of God teach us that there are great rewards to the people of God who have patience and exercise that patience and exercise that faith? God is a rewarder, he tells us in the very next chapter. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So he says, cast not away therefore, we're in Hebrews 10 verse 35, cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Do you believe Jesus loves you? Do you believe that Jesus cares about whatever you're going through in your life? Do you need Jesus to help you to be patient as you wait on him for whatever it is you need in your life? We need to pray every day, God help me not to cast away. See, the warning here is cast not away therefore your confidence. Don't give up. Don't stop having patience. Don't ever doubt the truth that God is going to come. For he that shall come will come and he will help you in your troubles. One more verse, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. If we're going to run the race that's set before us, we've got to have patience. Hebrews chapter 12, look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. The word of God says, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The only way that you can run the race, the only way that you can finish your course, the only way that you can keep serving God is if you exercise patience because in your patience possess ye your souls. Now, let's go very quickly to what happens if you don't have patience. What happens when you don't have patience? Back up in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs just a moment. Look in, in closing, go back to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16. Listen to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32. We have need of patience. We need God to help us to have cheerful confidence. I was talking to someone this past week and they said, 
You know, you used to always say, this is the best day of my life so far. And I got that from another dear friend. And I did used to always say that. This is the best day of my life so far. But since my wife died, this is not the best day of my life so far. But I can say, I can say that today I'm happy. I can say, what do I usually say now? What do I usually say when you ask me how I'm doing? Every day is a blessing. Every day is a blessing. That's right. That's right. Every day is a blessing. Every day we have blessings. You can look at your blessings or you can look at your troubles. You can think about what's going on that's wrong or you can think about the bountiful blessings that God has given to you. But every day is a blessing and it takes patience and it takes faith to truly feel that every day, that every day is a blessing and to feel this is the day the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. You have to overcome the devil if you're going to be happy every day of your life. If you're going to be full of joy every day of your life, you've got to overcome the temptations of the devil, and you've got to have confidence and patience as you wait on the Lord. Look now at Proverbs 16, verse 32. The Word of God says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Does it take a strong, mighty man to be slow to anger? It takes a tr tremendous amount of spiritual strength. Now look at Proverbs 25. Contrast what I just read from Proverbs 16. Look at Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28. Proverbs 25, the last verse in that chapter. Proverbs 25 and verse 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down and without walls. You remember any city in the Bible that was broken down, there were no, no walls left around that city? Jericho. Jericho. Total ruin. And the Word of God says here, He that hath no rule over his own spirit. What does it mean? What does it mean to have rule over your own spirit? Okay. Possessing your soul, uh, you're having patience. The Word of God says, he that hath no rule over his own soul. You've got to have self-control over your mouth and your mind and your body and everything. He that hath no rule over his own soul is like a city that is broken down and without walls. I'll close with one other verse. Go forward about ten pages in your Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Listen to verses 2 and 3. How many of you have ever been rash with your mouth? How many of you have ever spoken and wish you could have taken it back? Do you know what causes that? you know what you don't have when you speak before you think? You don't have patience. And when you speak before you think, you're going to destroy your soul. The scripture says in Ecclesiastes 5 verses 2 and 3, Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Two main thoughts there. First of all, don't be rash with your mouth. And the second one is, a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. What does it take to be slow to speak, slow to wrath? It takes patience. I pray that God will help every one of us today. There's a reason, listen carefully. There's a reason that God had this message for us today. There's a reason for every one of us, me and you included, there's a reason that God is telling us today that we need to have patience because in our patience we possess our souls. May God help us to understand his word and be doers of God's word is my prayer for Christ's sake.